Let's make art. Huh? Okay, so we're going to color a Pillow and Lucky cartoon. But before we do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the tools I use. Now, most of you know I used a tan-toned paper by Strathmore. I'm not going to show that, but I'm going to tell you that I use for the skin tones a warm gray Copec marker set for the skin tones because the warm gray has a similar tonal range to the tan paper. And uh, that's why I kind of like mixing that combination. Now, for the backgrounds, I use a cool gray set, and that gives me a pretty good contrast between the warms and the cooler colors, even on the warm toned paper. So that takes care of those items. Let's set those over there. Uh, one of the other items you'll see me use is this. This is a water brush pen. Uh, I don't know who makes it. Uh, I think there's a couple of different companies that do. Anyways, um, what it is is a just a cheap, they're cheap, they're like five bucks. They're plastic, cheap plastic. They have a, a fiber hair tip. And um, usually you would fill this with water and uh, use it to manipulate watercolors or to manipulate non-waterproof inks. But what I have done is I have gotten a refill bottle from Molito paint pens and I've used the refill bottle to put an amount of white ink in this and possibly a couple of drops of water to help thin it down a bit. I don't remember for sure if I did that. Uh, and you'll, But you'll see me use this uh, primarily for doing like hair and maybe a few other small areas, but usually just the hair. Um, for also hair and the highlighting, I use Poshka uh, paint pens. I like the ones with the plastic tips as opposed to the metal tip with a little fiber end on it. I like these all plastic ones better. You can pull them out and wash them and put them back in after they're dry. I also use red, as you know, the primary colors are white, black, and red on all the Pillow Lucky cartoons and shades of gray. Um, I Quickly, I just, I draw my cartoons using a pencil and then a Pentel GFKP Japan. These are made in Japan. This is a brush pen also, but this is for ink. And it also has fiber hairs as opposed to a, some sort of foam or whatever. So these last a lot longer. I do have to usually buy several of them in order to find one that has a truly good tip for uh, fine, fine lines. Um, and these are refillable also. They just have a plug-in cartridge. Uh, another item, of course, is Pigma. Pigma pens. These are also nice. These are archival ink, and they're resistant to the alcohol, and they're resistant to water to some degree or another. And uh, they're, they're pretty good. They come in an assortment of sizes, you know, almost like any mechanical pens do nowadays. They come in an assortment of sizes, and uh, they also have a brush version. Now, these are all fiber. There's no hairs, and they will wear out very quickly, so I try to not use them very much because they just don't last the, the uh, sharp point of the tip. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's all my tools um, in brief. Now, I'm currently in San Francisco, and the lighting here is completely atrocious. 
as well as the camera angle will be because I'm basically using the iPad's camera and it can only get to a certain angle, but I think the video will look okay. So without any further ado, let's get on to coloring Pillow and Lucky for Halloween. All right, we're starting off with the warm grays. For really deep shadows, I use a number four warm gray, but only in a scene that's gonna have some real dark shadows. Otherwise, I would start off with a three, uh, in particular on Caucasians. If you're doing Afro-Americans, you can go a bit darker, but you have to be careful. Copic markers start out really dark uh, when they're wet and then get a little bit lighter. That's why I'm shaking it here. Now I'm gonna grab up my cool grays and I'm gonna start filling in some background stuff. I tend to jump back and forth between the warm grays and the cool grays to fill in background stuff, foreground stuff, and kind of get a sense of where I'm going in terms of light and shadow and how dense each is going to be. Um, the background stuff is usually anywhere from a number two up to as dark as a number seven or even just pure black to me match with the ink. Okay, so I'm jumping back in with the warm grays, and you can see I'm building up along the edges. So that's probably a number two or a number one. Uh, I tend to use a, a number two a lot as I get close to the edges, and then a number one, and then I will frequently use a zero to help mix and blend the shades together, regardless of whether they're one, two, or three, four. Yeah, you can just get in there with a zero and help wet it to make it blend. As you can see, I'm going back in with the same darker shades, the, the three and the two and the one in order to build shades and even things out. So as you can see, I've jumped in and started filling in some of my darkest color, which is black. And off of that, I will build up the background, starting from the black to a number four or a five, I believe, and then up through two, which will be a pretty light gray and will just barely show up on the, on the tone paper. You've probably noticed that I use a dotting effect to, of a darker color to actually break up the background instead of trying to shade from a light color to a dark color. Uh, it kind of makes the background a little more interesting and breaks it up a little bit. Here I'm bringing in the first black and I spike it down and then drag out the spikes with a darker shade of gray, 
working my way up to lighter shades of gray and I just keep dragging down the same spikes essentially. And I find this, in, it's difficult to get Copex to make solid, clean fades from one color to another on this kind of, on this kind of paper anyways, unless your markers are super wet, which these are not. So here I'm using that water brush pen and I'm putting in her hair. I also filled her eyes as you saw because you can get a get pretty good point going. Uh, it'll work some pretty small areas. Now I'm whipping out my Pashka 0.7 and I'm working the highlights a little bit. It looks a little thin so I'm going to shake it up some more and then I'm going to get some more hair lines going. She's a witch so we're doing pillow as a witch so we've got to have a lot of scraggly looking hair that's more fun got that paint shook up so now it's nice and white so off we go Traditionally, Pillow wears a red dress, as we know, but in this case, as she's a Halloween drawing, I figured, let's do a black dress, but we'll give it red highlights and some white sparkles as well, as that's more Halloween-esque. I'm using the Pigma pen to retouch the black lines around her mouth and whatnot and do a few shading lines because uh, the paint tends to cover that stuff a lot. So I always go back and try to touch it up. Now we're doing a bunch of white highlights on an assortment of things and let's get back to the music. Sometimes you'll see me bump the white with my fingertip in order to pull off some of the wet paint. This makes it go a little on the lighter shade of white because it can be pretty strong. I do the same thing with the red paint occasionally to make sort of a pinkish tone. And it uh, works pretty good most of the time. I also do the same thing with highlights that are in shaded areas sometimes.
white paint pen ran out, so I had to open up a new one, get it shook up, get the paint flowing, and get it started, which takes a couple of minutes sometimes. They can be a little annoying that way, but once you get them going, they flow pretty good. Unfortunately, at this part, I restarted a new clip and somehow the lighting changed. The camera didn't get settled in on the right tone. So now the video is much darker and uh, there really isn't anything I can do about it, unfortunately. At this point, I'm just doing lettering on the headstones anyways. So it really doesn't matter if the video is a little on the dark side. Basically, I'm putting down the lettering in black and then I'm doing it again in white and then doing it one more time with the Pigma pen, just kind of touching around the edges and whatnot. It uh, really kind of looks crappy, but it's kind of supposed to because they're headstones. But in the end, you'll be able to read it and that's all that matters. I'll also have some uh, pictures of everything at the end of this video. Okay, so that's the end of the video, except for we're going to do the show and tell portion so you can see some nice photos of this close up and uh, get a better idea of what it all looks like. If you like my videos, be sure to subscribe, click the notification bell so you know when new videos come out, and uh, be sure to ask questions or tell me if you like what I'm doing or whatever it is you want to say in the comment section. I'd be happy to hear from everybody. Okay, here we go. The show and tell part.